Hello, everybody. Welcome again to a new way to museum. Uh, we're here at the beginning of the opening of our summer exhibit, which is Sahara Sea Monsters. And we're very fortunate. We have all the prime players in the development and creation of this exhibit. And so we thought it'd be a, a great inside look again for our new way to museum to talk to them, have a little chat about how the how we come up with an exhibit and i gotta tell you this is a spectacular exhibit i think it's going to be my very favorite exhibit that we've had here in the 13 years that i've been the director here so we're <laughs> we're very excited to have uh serge and nick and alana and isa um, with us to talk a little bit about the exhibit and maybe a few other things so my first real question to you guys is how did you all meet <laughs> On a bar. <laughs> and where? <laughs> so uh, we met because um, these guys uh, do these beautiful casts and things like that. And I started working with them probably, what, 10, 15, uh, 15. years, <laughs> 15 years ago. And um, we kind of hit it off and we've been working together ever since. And it was maybe five years ago that we decided that we would do an exhibit together because Nick and I had um, started building our own exhibits um, and created our company, Silver Plume Exhibitions. Mm -hmm. And then these guys said it would, they'd like to do some casts and do an exhibit with us. So that's kind of how we got started. It's been five years in the making. Five years. So, so does that mean it was your idea to come up with this exhibit idea? Or <laughs> no, you came, you was, went to them or did they come to you or was it just no, developed it was, over time? It was a joint idea because they had these really cool casts and these really cool fossils that, you know, just really needed to be exhibited. And so then we kind of all decided together, I think as a group, right? Yeah, as a group, we started talking about it and then we decided for it to happen. It took five years for it to happen. But <laughs> I'm glad now it worked out. <laughs> Yeah. So how did you guys settle on the name of the exhibit? <laughs> uh, we picked a few names and then we decided on this one after uh, we had three different names. So this one was the best one. <laughs> <laughs> all of the uh, all of the specimens in the exhibit all come from Morocco. And so we kind of did a poll of what people kind of know about Morocco and Sahara was a good name and they're all sea monsters. So everything in this exhibit is a water monster from Morocco. And so it is just seemed like the definition of monster being the definition of monster <laughs> being an animal of strange or unique shape, a extreme size or a threatening force. There's a Merriam-Webster definition of that somewhere <laughs> in the exhibit. So you guys have created all of these uh, casts. How did you decide which animals get into this exhibit and which ones didn't make the cut? <laughs> that need to be monster, that need to be ocean. So it was easy to pick in hundred of them few of them they represent the monster of oceans so these are these are casts but they were casts of real fossils so yes. who dug up all of the real fossils and who create you know what's that process for creating the casts first you need to have the specimen what is the most difficult part clean them 3d scan for the missing part and cast them in a silicone mold whatsoever and after the mounting, and now they are here. <laughs> <laughs> so did you find them in the field? Who, how did you, were you the one to dig them up? Who, who, who actually there found the fossils? The there's, there's different locations. Yeah, there's, there's a different few stories. different. So in the phosphate mines, there are diggers that dig there. And when they find something, they call us up and then we go and look at it. And if it's worth it, we'll uh, take it and clean it. And if it's not, sometimes it's just partials. A lot of times they find partial uh, skeletons. Mm -hmm. So that's how we right. found them. Some of them. Some of them. <laughs> some of them are from the desert, from Erput. <laughs> and then there's also some real fossils in the beginning, some invertebrate pieces that um, also come. The travel bites. There's a lot of diggers that find those things yeah. and then they, they say, here's this rough fossil. And 
yeah, they find the trilobites and the ammonites to go digging in the mines. And then uh, they do the prepping on those, on the trilobites. Uh, yeah. I was wondering, because there's some spectacular trilobites over there <laughs> with very fine detail, yeah. three dimension. And yeah, you've done some of them. Yeah, sandblasted out of the rock with a sandblaster. Mm -hmm. Well, there's also, I've noticed in this exhibit, some pretty spectacular artwork that really tells an interpretive story. So where do you get this artwork and how do you decide um, what you're looking for? Well, the majority of the artwork, actually all the artwork in this exhibit came from uh, Julius Chutney. He's a, a paleo artist out of Vancouver. And uh, Alana contacted him and along with Serge, uh, got together and kind of discussed the science behind all these creatures, uh, how they would have moved, how they would have looked, uh, what they ate, where they would have lived. And then out of that, Julius composed like this great mural behind us of a deep sea scene in the Cretaceous um, using accurate uh, reproductions and representations of all of the fossils that we had in the exhibit list. Very cool. Yeah. Um, I got to put my glasses on. I got to, I got to be able to read. <laughs> so how did you get all of this stuff from Morocco to the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Most of it came uh, in uh, air shipment and some of it came in a container shipment. So, uh, and this has been 20 years of collecting and prepping and uh, this is the last 20 years of work that we did. So well, that's, that's impressive. Now, 20 years of work, did, yeah. did the pandemic at all affect your work or the pandemic or was good it, it gave us more time to focus on our work <laughs> instead of traveling and going. <laughs> <laughs> so the pandemic helped us uh -huh. with this work <laughs> well it's good to know that there was something positive out of it gave us more time right. for concentrating <laughs> on work um let's see how did you decide on the story that you wanted to tell you have all these fossils all from Morocco and they're in the sea, but how did you decide what story for all of these things that you wanted to tell? Well, they fit so well into the timeline where when we started discussing this, I mean, we discussed our specimen list and as we were talking about it, I kind of realized that there was something from almost every time period. Morocco really has this diverse 600 million years of fossil record that you can pull from. And so then we kind of thought maybe um, extinction events and the rise and fall of biodiversity would be a good framework to tell a story about all of these things. And so we really focused on talking about each individual time period, all the different animals and creatures that were able to, to thrive in those time periods. And then they would end in great extinction events. And so we can kind of walk through the whole, the whole of Earth's history just through the fossils of Morocco. It's really quite extraordinary. Yeah. So. And and you'll see throughout the exhibition there are monster levels, which was a creation of Alana. But kind of what that represents in the throughout time, depending on what lived in the ocean, depended on what was the biggest and meanest creature. And so in the beginning, you'll find our uh, cyanobacteria. the cyanobacteria, <laughs> which at the time. In the exhibit, it's pretty small, but at the time, it changed the world. It created oxygen. It killed off most anything living prior to it and paved the way for all of us oxygen-breathing <laughs> creatures. And so that gets a monster level 10. And then as you get here, all of a sudden, your monsters are now 40 feet long with, with 80 teeth. <laughs> two sets of jaws <laughs> and and so throughout time the monster whoever was the biggest monster in the sea changed and turned into what we know today cool well you've got some really unique design elements in the in the exhibit how did you come up with the the design or the feel that you wanted to create for the exhibit uh well i was responsible for the display cases so i'll start discussing the <laughs> display case design. <laughs> but uh, we went out in, what was it, 2018. 18. We went to Morocco um, to visit 
the Morocco team. And and something that really caught my eye was the use of of geometry throughout throughout the region. And so I wanted to do something a little more creative than just a square display case, which is so common. Um, so as you go through the exhibit, you'll see that it's hexagonal, and it also is a use of wood and metal. So it's kind of a mixed media display case, which is kind of to pull out that feel of moving through Morocco. So, and then I did the graphics, um, and most dinosaur exhibits and skeleton exhibits, fossil exhibits, you know, they kind of have a, a science museum feel, but because this one was, was all Moroccan fossils, we really wanted to pull in those design elements. And so I kind of would put something together and then send it to the guys and they would all pass it around the team. And I don't know what you guys are looking at on your side, but, um, yeah. You know they would they would critique and and point us in the right direction for colors and patterns and then they did the uh, there's Arabic translations of all of the the species names and things like that that they all worked mm -hmm. on very hard to to bring in all those elements and tie it all together so it's not just another skeleton exhibit it's it's a you know Sahara sea monsters. Sahara sea monsters. <laughs> I don't know if you want to. It's talk art about and fossils. Art and fossils. But do you want to yeah. speak to the Arabic design at all, or? Yeah, the Arabic design we got mostly from the Moroccan doors and uh, like, I, like how they built and handcraft built architecture, <laughs> architecture mm -hmm. and handcrafts and stuff. And even the poops were sitting on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. so here's here's. The real important question, how was it that the Sternberg was a museum chosen to be the <laughs> world premiere of this exhibit? Probably because the Sternberg Museum is a historical museum. He looks small, but he's very famous. He's a beginning of a lot of huge discovery in paleontology. And a lot of uh, little kids like me was get to through their passion through the book speaking about Stenberg digging on a field and the famous fish in a fish and today we are here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Serge said when he was 16 years old he saw the fish and fish and he saw that Sternberg fish and he was like wow I would wish I would go and see that place one day. Ah, <laughs> and he, <laughs> I don't know I will do, I will meet the Stenberg Museum. When I was 16, just a picture in a book, you know, something you know is nice, but you will never think you will do, you know. But when you want, when you, when you focus on what you do and you do with your brain and your heart, one of these days you go where your dream take you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for my friend dish. <laughs> so it's, you know, we're really excited to have this exhibit here and to be able to see uh, uh, fossils and stories coming from Morocco. How do, do you have a feel for how people in Morocco feel about um, all of their fossils being put into a, 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 an exhibit that's touring, the, touring Kansas and the United States? Do you want to feel that one? Yeah, I think they'll be very happy to see that their culture is being shown to the world and that people will get to know more about it and about all the fossils that have been found there in the Sahara and the phosphate beds and everything. So it's a very good thing to show a little bit of Morocco's culture and uh, his history and everything. Awesome. Are there, you know, these are sea monsters in Kansas. We have a, a seaway from part of the same time period that, that's covered in your exhibits. Are there any fossils or animals that are similar that you would find in Morocco that you also would find in Kansas. Yes, of course, the Mosasaurs, the Xifactinus, the Porteus Molossus, a lot of huge uh, repti marine reptiles, the uh, Elasmosaur. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> we, we have common point. You have the ancestor and we have the ki next of kind, if I understand good my English. <coughs> and uh, so that makes sense to exhibit here. You know, the same background, same ocean, and your western interior sea was not so close, and they pretend. She <laughs> leaked. <laughs> <laughs> so, since since we're, we're since we're we're picking on you here, why is your spinosaur so small? 
No. <laughs> I know, I know. In America, bigger is better, okay? Me, I work just on a fact. If the bones have this size, that must be this size. And so, because in America you love big things, a lot of time you try to find the most biggest part and adapt the rest of the skeleton. Where us, we try to find the most of the skeleton, and that is a, the real size, because that is fact. You, I touch the bones. Try to show me uh, the biggest, uh, I don't know, spinosaur, whatever, real bones. <laughs> if he's like, uh, I don't know, 30 meter long or whatever, I won't see the bones, <laughs> the real bones. How did all of you get interested in paleontology? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to start off down the line? <laughs> Uh, it was a passion. Since a kid, I used to always collect little agates on the roadside for my mom. And she loved them. And then we would go travel to the desert. And when I was uh, 17, I traveled to the desert and met Serge there. And I was impressed with the work he did and everything. And then we started collecting and prepping and doing all the work we do now. <laughs> I hated dinosaurs as a kid. <laughs> My parents um, were both in the museum industry, and I was dragged to every museum in the entirety of the United States when I was a child, and I um, went kicking and screaming mostly when I was little. But then as I got older and I started kind of seeing it more as a teenager and as an adult and, and all that, I kind of really love it. I think it is so cool to see the wonder and excitement from everybody coming to museums. And so I just kind of fell back in love with it as an adult. And now it's what we do. We go to museums all over and we build exhibits and it's really, it's fun. <laughs> and I got into it through marriage. <laughs> Alana and I met, what, 20 years ago now, 15 years ago. And uh, before that, my background was sociology and outdoor education and uh, construction. And so as, as Alana and I moved along, I got into building the exhibits. So my, I'm still pretty ignorant on the paleontology side of things, but I can build a display case to put under it. <laughs> yeah. And me, because I love what I do, I was electrician. I walk, I break my ass every day for going in a factory. I see the check pay. <laughs> so I decide what I like is dinosaur. I quit my job. So after I go in a marketplace with a little camping table, few fossils I have. And you know what? That function. I am here today. And through the years I work with scientists every moment. I meet on, on my way the right person and the right moment. And little by little, I, I work with scientists, museum, smuggler, people all over the, over the world, speaking different weird languages, eating weird things. I meet kids, I meet, I meet people, I meet the specimen, create emotions, and oh, I can find a better job. No, that don't exist for me. You know, so I keep going. I keep, I want not increase, I want just stay like that. this kind of level. And you, what you push you to the paleontology? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, for, for me, um, I actually um, loved a little bit about dinosaurs when I was a kid, but a lot of it actually happened for me um, when I was in college because one of the things I really loved as a kid growing up was I loved um, Jacques Cousteau mm -hmm. and, and the undersea world. And I loved also watching Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. So I loved wildlife and animals. Mm -hmm. I also, um, when I got, I had, uh, my brother got me a little trilobite when I was, when I was a, a kid and I thought those were really cool. I went to college and I was studying biology because I kind of thought wildlife biology would be great. And I had a friend that you need to take geology. Mm -hmm. So I took a geology class and I fell in love with taking a paleontology class. And I started thinking, I love animals and life and, and 
paleontology is the history of life mm -hmm. and how awesome would it be to be able to, to go back in deep time and, and really understand the history of life. And so that's what really propelled me was putting the biology and geology together. And I went to graduate school to study paleontology and reconstructing the history of life. And uh, museums became a way for me to, you know, I, I taught for a while at, at the universities and museums were a way to really expand the reach to the number of people that you could reach. Um, and, and talking about natural history and history of life. And so, plus, it gets me the opportunity to travel and to meet unique and fascinating and cool people like all of you guys. And <laughs> that's not a, you know, an opportunity you get in many other professions. So it's, it's uh, been a, a wonderful ride. And I really appreciate you guys being here. Thanks. We're very happy to be here. <laughs> so two more questions. Oops. What is it that you really hope people that come and visit your exhibit take away with them? The dimension of time, the wonderful power of life, where we belong, we belong to life. The, if they can just be more calm after that, less scary about life, because we are so powerful, be one of these form of life. Life don't care about you and me. It's kind of powerful things with multi-forms. Some forms disappear, some forms show up, but life is still here from billions of years and I never doubt she will be there after us and uh, that gives you the strong, I don't know, inspiration. You belong to a strong family, you know? No religion, no, no race, no color, no whatever. Just you are part of this wonderful, uh, powerful f river of life, you know. Yeah. Superb if they realize that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's important, or what I hope that people get from this is basically exactly what Sarah said, is there's this crazy diversity of life that came before us. I mean, the from a huge spinosaur to a little trilobite to a bizarre anomalocarid. I mean, there are some crazy things that have lived on this planet. And there are extinction events that have happened. It's not unusual for things to go extinct. It happens to 99% of life that has lived on this planet. Mm -hmm. And it's happening today, and that's part of recognizing signs and symptoms of the planet that it's, you know, maybe people will be able to take what they learned here and what has happened in the past and, and look into the future. Fantastic. Anything you wanna add? What do you want people to? And also to see all those different specimens that are similar and that lived in all the different areas of the world at the same time. Like they find the Mosasaurs yeah. here and you find them in Africa and Sahara and everywhere and even in Europe. So that's interesting to see also. The world's a small place. Yeah, <laughs> small place. And, so go ahead. And, and be a monster can be a cool thing. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your monsters. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Inside you. Not everything you think is a monster is a monster. <laughs> I, am, I am one of them. I know what it is to be a monster. <laughs> <laughs> so my last uh, question is, when can I come visit Morocco? Are you gonna, when can I come, come tour and have you guys show me around? Because I'm soon after seeing can. this, I'm very excited. <laughs> as soon as you can come, you're welcome anytime. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to get there because, you know, uh, well, we know that, uh, you know, Morocco, the Atlas Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains were one giant high as the Himalayan mountains at one time. So we were all together once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tectonics has separated us, but I want to come visit so we can be back together. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, everybody. Ho hope you enjoyed uh, the sort of look back into the, the, the thoughts and designs and what it takes to put together uh, a traveling natural history exhibit. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. If you ever get a chance to see Sahara Sea Monsters uh, coming to your city or anywhere even close into your state, 
You're going to have to take the opportunity to go visit it because it truly is spectacular. So thank you again for joining joining us on a new year, uh, new way to museum. And we'll see you again next episode. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.